Good morning. And welcome to Bethlehem Lutheran Church, where today we get the opportunity to present our graduates their quilts. Thank goodness. Today in our readings and graduates, we picked these songs out specifically for you. Um, the world of the songs, the readings were determined for us, but you will hear things in our readings of your steadfast love is established forever. Truly our shield belongs to the Lord. You are entrusted with the word, and I believe in God the Father Almighty. Our songs have, your word alone has power to save us, Christ be our light. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. Lord, build us up as we guide and teach each other. And go, my children, with the blessing, you are never alone. And please remember that, that our church and the Lord is with you always. Our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you are the one of us. We sin in God. of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our gathering song today is found on page 715 of your hymnal, Christ be our light, verses 1, 2, and 5.
rich in mercy, so great is God's love for us, that even when we were dead in sin, with Christ God has made us alive again by grace, by grace, by grace you have been saved through faith, by grace, by grace, by grace. Shout, they walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. 
chapter 6, verses 12 through 23. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer presence your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either by sin, which leads to death, or obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater inequality, no, now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now are ashamed? The end of those things is death, but now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage of you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to take this opportunity to just congratulate the council members, our graduates, and especially my daughter, Ashlyn. Our gospel acclamation today is the song, I'm So Glad Jesus Lifted Me, page 860, verses 1 and 3. Please stand. Hush, child, God ain't dead. A woman lost her husband and went into an extended grief period. She took flowers to the cemetery weekly. She secluded herself. She dropped out of organizations and activities. Her doctor became very concerned about her because she was developing symptoms of physical illness. One day he told her about two of his patients in a nearby hospital. They did not have families to visit them. They were alone in this world. 
The doctor said to the grieving woman, next Sunday, instead of taking flowers to the cemetery, why don't you take them to those two lonely patients of mine in the hospital? Just say hello to them and see if they need anything and see what you can do for them. Somewhat reluctantly, the woman did as her doctor requested. And by that simple little act, the log jam was broken. It melted the ice around her heart. It washed away the bitterness. And more and more often, she took the flowers to the hospital instead of the cemetery. She found the healing power of God, which had been, she had been resisting. It had broken through. She was healed of the kind of destructive grief that had been diminishing her life. She had moved into a gracious circle, and all because of a simple act of mercy. We need each other when trouble strikes. Her simple act of sharing flowers taught her that everyone has troubles in the world. Trouble is everywhere. Grief, sorrow, pain, heartache, sickness, loneliness. We could go on and on. As one human being aches, all human beings experience something of that ache. When one hurts, all hurt. We especially see that when death strikes. It seems the whole community is affected by the death of one of its members. There is a hush, a heaviness in the air, as the sting of death is experienced. People speak in hushed tones. Food is brought to the house where death has been dealt. People hug. They cry. They try to console one another with words or just the action of being there. When a boy died in a traffic accident at the age of 23, it seemed like everyone in this world came to the funeral home. They just sat there and stared at one another. Boys his age just stared bewildered at the sight of death. There was just a hush in the air, though hundreds of people came. There was hardly any noise in the funeral home. Death brought a quiet heaviness to everyone present. In this troubled world, filled with sin and brokenness, we tend to look to someone or something to place the blame. A doctor from New York Church uh, said this on April 20th, 1984, after the death of his son Alex. The night after Alex died, I was sitting in the living room of my sister's house outside of Boston. When a middle-aged lady came in, shook her head when she saw me and said, I just don't understand the will of God. Instantly, I was up and in hot pursuit, swarming all over her. I'll say you don't, lady. I said, I knew the anger would do me some good. He continued, do you think it was the will of God that Alex never fixed that lousy windshield wiper of his? And that he was probably driving too fast in a storm? That he probably had a couple of too many frosties? Do you think it's God's will that there were no streetlights along that stretch of road? and no guardrails separating the road and the Boston Harbor? He continues, Nothing so infuriates me as the capacity of a seemingly intelligent person to get it through their head that God does not go around this world with his fingers on the trigger, his fists around knives, his hands on the steering wheels. God is against all unnatural deaths. And Christ spent an inordinate amount of time delivering people from paralysis, insanity, leprosy, and mutants. I think Alex's younger brother put it very simply, standing at the head of the casket of his brother. You blew it, buddy. You blew it. The one thing that you should never be, never be said when someone dies is it is the will of God. Never do we know as humans, to be able to say that. My consolation lies in the knowing that it was not the will of God that Alex died, but that when the waves closed over the sinking car, God's heart was the first of all hearts to break. God shares our sorrows. He shares our pain. We live in a world that has not been fully redeemed. We live in a world with brokenness and sorrow and grief. As we live in this world, we need to remember that God is here. He has not caused our brokenness, but he is there to share it with us. God has not fully redeemed this world yet, so he allows the sin, death, and the power of Satan to live in our lives. A pastor once wrote, 
Some time ago, I saw a picture of an old burned out mountain shack. All that remained was a chimney. The charred debris had, of what had been that family's sole possession. In front of this destroyed home stood an old grandfather looking man dressed only in his underclothes with a small boy clutching a pair of patched overalls. It was evident that the child was crying. Beneath the picture were the words which the artist felt that the old man speaking to the boy, they were simple words, yet presented a profound theology and philosophy of life. Those words, hush child, God ain't dead. That picture of, of that burned out mountain shack, that old man, the weeping child, and those words, God ain't dead, Keep returning to my mind instead of it being a reminder of despair of life, it has come to be a reminder of hope. I need reminders of hope. In this world, in the midst of all of life's troubles and failures, I need a mental picture to remind me that all is not lost as long as God is, in, is alive and in control of my life. God is indeed control, in control. And that control is seen today. A man named Jarius was in a desperate way. His little girl lay dying. Jarius was faced with the trouble of a sickness. He had tried everything. Doctors had come and gone. The priests had come, but their prayers were unanswered. Jarius was in a desperate situation. Then he thought about Jesus. No doubt he had heard about Jesus preaching in his own synagogue. So Jarius thought, maybe this preacher can help me. Maybe I can swallow my pride and try this one thing. His hopelessness probably was turning to confidence, to faith, to trust in Jesus as he made his way to find Jesus. Jerry sought out this wandering preacher, the son of a carpenter, this religious fanatic, this Jesus of Nazareth, the one who claimed to be the God, even God's son. Jerry had faith enough to turn to Jesus in this encounter with his trouble. He had faith enough to place the well-being of his girl into the Jesus' hands. Jesus became Jairus' hope, and Jesus did deliver. Even when the messenger came to say that the girl had died, do not fear, only believe. Jesus gave Jairus hope, and even when his mourner, mourner, mourners laughed at Jesus, Jesus still gave hope to Jairus. He asked everyone to step outside, then Jesus took the hand of the little girl and said, Little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl arose from her bed. The hope, the trust that had been placed in Jesus was well founded. He did deliver the girl. He did deliver this family from their moment of trouble. So as we face the troubles of life, it is to Jesus we must turn. It is Jesus who can deliver. The one who can ease our burden, who can shoulder our sorrow, who can walk with us through the valley. It is to this Jesus we must turn, like Jerry's. We must trust Jesus with our troubles. In that trust and faith, Jesus will be present. Hush, child, God ain't dead. A girl who was handicapped was told that she would, could never escape from her prison of pain and weakness. Oh well, she replied. There's a lot of living to be found within your limitations if you don't wear yourself out fighting them. I would like to maintain that strength to live within the limits of your troubles from Jesus. Yes, there is a lot of living you and I can do, could and should do as we face the troubled times of life. And that living comes from Jesus' power in our lives. Hush, child, God ain't dead. I have a cute little story that I like. I hope you do. A little girl had been shopping with her mom in Walmart. She must have been six years old. This beautiful red-haired, freckled-faced image of innocence, it was pouring outside. The kind of rain that gushes over the top of a rain gutter so much in a hurry to hit the earth, it has no time to flow down the spout. We all stood there under the awning and just inside the door of the Walmart. We waited. Some patiently, others irritated because nature messed up their hurried day. I'm always mesmerized by the rainfall. 
I got lost in the sound and the sight of heavens washing away the dirt and the dust of the world. Memories of running, splashing, so carefree as a child came pouring in as a welcome reprieve from the worries of my day. The little voice was so sweet as it broke the hypnotic trance, we were all caught in. Mom, let's run through the rain, she said. What? Mom asked. Let's run through the rain. She repeated, no, honey, we'll wait until it slows down a bit. This young girl, of course, being a child, waited about 30 seconds and repeated, Mom, let's run through the rain. We'll get soaked if we do, Mom said. No, we won't. That's not what you said this morning, the young girl said as she tugged at her mom's arm. This morning? When did I say we could run through the rain and not get wet? Don't you remember? When you were talking to Daddy about his cancer, you said if God can get us through this, he can get us through anything. The entire, entire crowd stopped dead silent. I swear you could, couldn't hear anything but the rain. We all stood silently. No one came or left in the next few minutes. Mom paused and thought for a moment about what she could say. Now some would laugh it off and scold, scold her for being silly. Some might even ignore what was said. But that was a moment of affirmation in a young child's life, a time when an innocent, innocent trust can be nurtured so that it will bloom into faith. Honey, you are absolutely right. Let's run through the rain. If God lets us get wet, well, maybe we needed to wash him, Mom said. And off they ran. We all stood watching, smiling, and laughed as they darted past the cars, and yes, even through the mud puddles, they held their shopping bags over their heads just in case, and they got soaked. But they were followed by a few who screamed and laughed like children all the way to their cars. And of course, yes, I did. I ran. I got wet. I needed no washing, too. Circumstances or people can take away your material possessions. They can take away your money, and they can take away your health. But no one can ever take away your precious memories. Hush, child. God ain't dead. Run through the rain. God bless. We will do 634. I'll all hail the power of Jesus. One through three. Thank <laughs> you. 
you now please join me in reciting the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Call into unity with one another in the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of companionship, encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations. Shape our shared future and give us hearts eager to join in a festival shout of praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be attuned to where the earth is crying out. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope. Meet hate with joy. And welcome one another as we would welcome you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of care, accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort those who are sick, lonely, or abandoned, especially Ben Lozano, John Forsythe, Trevor Berger, Al Brower, Lynn Thompson, Linda Currier, Randy Johnson, Phillips Lennon, Al Royland, Jim Truno, Wayne Matson, Brad Peterson, Alice Olson, Don't Groan, and anyone we know name in our hearts. Strengthen those who are in prison or awaiting trial. Renew the spirits of all who came upon you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of community, we give thanks for this congregation. Give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. And today be with our graduates, today and every day. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of love, you gather in your, in your embrace all who have died. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share the peace by waving and home text message waving. Peace be with you, everyone. Now I ask Beth to come forward.
mess and got her quilt. She said, well, when I get one, it better be really bright. <laughs> I think she got a bright one. And we, we remembered that. Okay. okay, now that I got your attention, you guys, our church had a mentorship program when our graduates were in confirmation. I had the pleasure of being Ashlyn's mentor. As it turned out, she was a mentor to me also. Our girl talks were fantastic. Anyone that has been a mentor, I'm sure feels the same way. To the class of 2020, I'm so sorry part of your year, senior year was put on hold. The events that should have been highlights were not. No prom, no spring sports. It would have been great to congratulate Josh on his no-hitter or his grand slam, and that didn't happen. No band and choir concerts, no award ceremony, to name a few. Not a, ch <clears throat> not a chance to say goodbye to all of your classmates or your favorite teachers had to be difficult. God has a plan for you, so we at Bethlehem are not going to say goodbye. We want you back to tell and share his plan for you. Your quilts were made with love and respect just for you. Please share love and respect to others just as Bethlehem has done for you. Please turn to page 83 in the front of your hymnal. There's a top prayer. It's a youth prayer that we will read together for the graduates. Please stand. God of all good gifts, your son gathered children into his arms and blessed them. Help us to understand our youth as they go on the years in the knowledge of your work. Give us compassion when they face temptations and experience failures. Teach us to encourage their search for truth and value in their lives. Help us to appreciate their ideals and sympathize with their frustrations. That with them we may look for a better world and the unity that they have known. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Congratulations.
Christ is with you. Thank you, Thank you God. God. God bless. Have a great day.